Hi everybody. We're going to go on a virtual hike on Mount Independence. We want to go that way. Well, maybe not. Welcome to Mount Independence. I'm Ennis Dooling. When I first got involved in this project, I looked forward to leading all of you on a hike at lunchtime. I didn't plan to stand around swatting at black flies and trying to lecture. I wanted to walk really fast and allow you to see how big this place is and how many interesting things there are. So let's go. Here's Elsa. Well, hi, Ennis. It's great to see you today. We're going on a hike. Oh, wonderful. Would you like one of our trail brochures? If you open it up, it's got the whole trail system marked out yeah. on it. Thank you. We'll Have see you fun. Later. <laughs> it's about a mile and a quarter as the crow flies from the visitor center to the Grand Battery, the northern point. But we're not going in a straight line, and we're taking lots of detours. Here's the foundation of an officer's house. There is nothing left, all the wood rotted, many years ago. We're on the Baldwin Trail, named for Jedithan Baldwin, who was the engineer who built many of the fortifications on Mount Independence. Here comes a beautiful view of Lake Champlain. You can see Mount Defiance across the lake about a mile away. Imagine British cannon on the summit. This is the site of the hospital. It was 250 feet long and two stories high. Once a year, Revolutionary War reenactors camp in this large clearing where the 3rd Brigade was located. When I first hiked here in the 1970s, cows were still grazing on the mount. Here's another view of Mount Defiance. We're standing in the middle of the major fortification on Mount Independence, the Star Fort. Of course, there's nothing left, but use your imagination. Imagine barracks and, uh, and tall wooden walls. This is the Star Fort. This is the site of the crane that was used to hoist provisions and supplies from Catfish Bay. There were no ticks at the mount during the revolution. Today we worry about Lyme disease. I'll be doing a thorough tick check when I get home. We've reached the Citadel, or Horseshoe Battery, which dominates the Narrows. You can see Fort Ticonderoga across the lake. Let's see, it says, in memory of the heroic garrison which gave this fortification its name on July 18, 1776, erected by the National Society of Colonial Dames of America in the state of Vermont.
Hey, we're here. The point. Let's have lunch. We made it down to the lake. Imagine the Great Bridge crossing here. It's 10 feet above the water and 14 feet wide. It was never completed. Below that, there is a floating bridge of logs. And if you had to walk on that, it was this kind of thing. I am climbing to the top of a rocky cliff that juts above the lake. From this height, masts were lowered into the gunboats and row galleys of the Lake Champlain fleet. Ah, here's the spring. Pretty disgusting looking water. In the spring of 1777, Americans planted a large garden in this area. A chaplain was pleased to have a breakfast of radishes on June 11. You should be glad this is a virtual hike. There is so much mud. If this was a real hike, I would be apologizing to you. We're close to Catfish Bay. The sight of the crane is above us, but it's too muddy to stick around and sightsee. This is really steep. This is the road coming up from Catfish Bay to the Star Fort and the hospital. And it explains why they built the crane so they could haul things up uh, more easily. I'm getting a little out of breath. The, the black flies are out today too. Um, in the 18th century, the armies were bothered a lot by mosquitoes and mosquito-borne illnesses. But today, we've got black flies. We're crossing from the lake side of the mount to the east, where blockhouses overlook low land. This flat, shaded area looks like a park. It is, in fact, the Southeast Battery, which dominates the only road to the mount. It was built by Americans and occupied by Germans. If this was a real hike, we'd be worried about being late for the afternoon session. We've hiked about five miles, and now it's time to look at some artwork and some old maps and to meet the people who are part of the story of Mount Independence.